Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about how Fusion assemblies are different than traditional assemblies that you might run into in programs like Inventor or SolidWorks or Pro Engineer or whatever you might have. Uh, so I have a couple different examples. What I have on the screen right now is how we're typically traditionally used to doing it and the fact that we design a component as a part file and then we design another component as a part file and we design another component as a part file and then we assemble them together in an assembly file. So if we look, here's an individual component file that I have drawn up and then I drew this yoke, that's an individual component file and this screw is an individual component file. I started a new Fusion design and I started, inserted the V-block, then I inserted the yoke and I inserted the screw and added joints as I went. So you can see I grounded it, then added a, a another linked file, or added a joint, and so on down the road. Um, so now if I were to test this out, kind of the way I have it set up is this thing, it can show how the motion of this would be allowed to go, and when I let it go, uh, when I let go of the model, it's set to go back to the rest position, which I've defined as zero, which is where this was assembled together. Some things you can do currently in Fusion now is I just couldn't right click on this file and say, you know, open or edit or double click on it or do whatever. I actually have to open this file, uh, open the source of it, I guess, and then make any design changes that I want. This is kind of the bottom up approach that we're used to taking, like I said, in more traditional uh, CAD programs, like for instance, Inventor. I'm going to show you a different way and the way that Fusion is a little bit different. So here I have a Fusion design file where I created all three components at the same time. So if we take my timeline and roll it back to the beginning, roll it back a little bit more, there we go. I can see the first step is I added, I drew that uh, first V-block component. Then I put a cut in that V-block. I mirrored it. I drew the second component, put a hole in the top, threaded that hole added a joint, started the third component, drew the screw, threaded it, added a chamfer, and then added a joint to get it into place. So you can see, now if we look at our timeline, I can see all the steps that went into building this all in one spot. This is a pretty simple design, and uh, not so difficult to kind of go through and, and figure this out, but if you have a very complex design, it's hard, it's more difficult to figure out what these different um, steps of the design are. Now notice right now that I have the Fusion design, the top level of this activated. And you can see that by the radio button that's been clicked. If I wanted to go and work on uh, one a component and just see the features that belong to that component, for instance, let's go activate the V block. Now when I do that, you'll see that the other parts in the other components in my Fusion design file, I should say, become transparent, letting me know that that's not the active thing that I'm working on anymore. And when we look at the timeline, the only thing that we have down here are features and sketches that are related to the currently active component. So let's go activate the yoke component. Now you can see that there's a sketch that created an extrude, then a hole and a thread. Those are just the uh, features that belong to the yoke part. If I activate the screw, the other two components turn transparent and now I can see the sketch that I made the revolve from and the thread and the chamfer. If I go and activate the top level design, you can now see those very same history. They're just stacked up along the way with a few more things like the joints and whatever added in there. So um, it's kind of it can be kind of frustrating to have to open up each component to be able to make the changes, but it's also frustrating to have a large design and not know what features or sketches control what component on screen. There's a couple different ways I want to show you how you can deal with that. If I go down to this little gear down here in the lower right hand corner and I click on that, I can turn on something called component color swatch. And when I do, you'll see that the sketches and features all inherit different colors. And if I look at my browser up here, those same colors are all uh, added up there. So whatever you can, I can quickly see that uh, this component goes with V block. And these things, these features and sketches here go with yoke. So, a quicker and easier way to understand what do I need to go and change to change the to change the component that I want to make the update to. I'm going to go shut that off. Okay, I'll shut that off. 
The other way we can do this is to do Shift N on your keyboard. So I'm gonna hold Shift and N at the same time. And now you can see that all the colors of my model are overridden and they're toggled to match the colors of my timeline. So I can pretty quickly see that this pinkish color here is going to be uh, features that belong to the yolk. And this yellowish color here is going to be things that belong to the screw. And the violet or purple color belong to the V-block component. And you can also see that the things, the components up in our timeline, I'm sorry, the components in the browser are also colored the same way. And you can see that uh, we have design features as well. And uh, you can see like things like joints or whatever belong to those top level fusion design. So I hope that starts to make designing in a single file inside of Fusion 360 uh, make more sense rather than a traditional uh, distributed design or bottom-up design where we model each part and then place it into an assembly file. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to subscribe, uh, that would be fantastic. Thanks for watching.